Hi, my name is Rick Stack, and this recording will attempt to introduce you to the teachings of Seth, the internationally acclaimed spiritual teacher who spoke through the late author Jane Roberts while she was in trance. Seth coined the phrase, you create your own reality, in the early 1970s, and Seth's empowering message is considered by many to have literally launched the New Age movement. I had the privilege of being a friend and student of Seth and Jane Roberts, and I attended Jane Roberts' Seth classes in Elmira, New York in the 1970s. While there, I recorded over 100 Seth sessions, and this recording will include samples of Seth speaking during those classes on a variety of topics. The list of authors and leaders in the human potential movement who strongly recommend the Seth books is extensive and you could read some of their actual recommendations on the Seth Educational site at www.sethlearningcenter.org. That's Seth Learning Center, without any spaces in between the words, then dot O-R-G. People who have actually attended a Seth session include people such as Jim Henson, originator of The Muppets, Richard Bach, author of Jonathan Livingston Seagull, and Robert Monroe, founder of the Monroe Institute. The books written by Seth have sold over 7 million copies and have been translated into over 11 languages. If you want answers to life's most important questions, if you want to improve your life conditions, Seth's teachings can help you, but he will not teach you to rely on him or any external teacher. He will instead teach you how to access and use the tremendous source of power and wisdom that lies within you. That power and wisdom is your birthright. It is yours for the asking, and it is not hard to find or use. In 1963, Jane Roberts and her husband Robert Butts began experimenting with a Ouija board as part of an experiment for a book Jane was working on, on extrasensory perception. During her experiments, a personality began to communicate with Jane and Rob through the Ouija board, and eventually, with Jane's permission, began to speak through Jane while she was in a trance state. The entity that spoke through Jane Roberts called himself Seth, and stated that he was a non-physical teacher who had lived many lives in physical reality. On this recording, I am going to try to give you a sampling of some of Seth's teachings. According to Seth, the physical world with which we are so familiar can be thought of as a training system or school. In this reality, we are being trained to become responsible co-creators with all that is, or God, or universal intelligence, or whatever term you prefer. This brings us to one of the foundation stones of Seth's teachings, and it is this. You create your own reality. You create your own reality according to your thoughts, emotions, desires, and beliefs. Events do not just happen to you by chance. Physical events are the outward manifestation of your inner landscape. If you want to change your reality, you must first change your thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. In a moment, you will hear Seth speaking about this concept. Before we begin, I'd like to mention that this first audio excerpt can also be found on the Seth Educational site, and you can find a written transcript of it there. The rest of the audio selections on this CD are not on the website and are excerpts from Seth Sessions, some of which are taken from the 32 tapes and CDs which comprise the Seth Audio Collection. Here now is a Seth excerpt taken from the Seth Audio Collection, Volume 1, Tape 1, on the topic, Creating Your Reality. Your beliefs form reality. Your individual beliefs and your joint beliefs. And if you believe in very simple terms, that people mean you well, 
and will treat you kindly, they will. And if you believe that the world is against you, then so it will be in your experience. And if you believe, if you believe that you will begin to deteriorate at twenty-two, then so you shall. And if you believe that you are poor and always will be, then so your experience will so prove to you. Your beliefs meet you in the face when you look in the mirror. They form your image. You cannot escape your beliefs. They are, however, the method by which you create your experience. When I speak to you about beliefs, you think of negative beliefs. You see, the very joy of your being speaks of your positive beliefs. So I did not mean uh, you to concentrate upon the negative beliefs that you have with that in mind. I want you to see where your beliefs conflict with each other. I want uh, you to examine uh, for the first time in uh, this life your conscious mind and its content. <clears throat> you all pride yourselves on being conscious creatures. Then I am telling you to be aware of the contents of your conscious mind. A simple enough request. <laughs> You are only now beginning to know how loaded uh, it is. <laughs> it is all uh, available. The beliefs are not buried unless you believe that they are The thoughts and the feelings and emotions that guide you are not lost in the dark closet of your mind, but quite there if you are willing simply to look. It is all available. And in its own way, it is all creative, and it is all uh, constructive. And it is all there for you to see and uh, use uh, and recognize. Now I have said uh, this in my book, but I have only begun uh, to say it. The Hubble governs are not down deep in the unconscious. You do not have to play hide and seek with psychologists to find them. They are not buried in your past, in this life or in any other life. You are not bound by promises given. You are not bound by false beliefs. You are free conscious being. And so hopefully you will learn how to be joyful conscious being. And when you are, then you will not be afraid of the innocent. And you will have freely let in data from the outside world and the inside world. 
being uh, quite secure in your position. It is important that you here realize that you are not at the mercy of the unexplainable, that you are not at the mercy of events over which you have no control, whether those events are psychological events or physical ones in your terms. As I have told you, there is little difference if you believe that your present life is caused by incidents in your early infancy or caused by past lives over which equally you feel you have no control. Your events, your lives, your experiences are caused by your present beliefs. Change the beliefs and your life changes. Now, Seth has said that if you realize that you create your physical reality through your thoughts, emotions, desires, and beliefs, you have learned the most important aspects of reality. This is what you have been setting out to do in your other lives, your past existences. You get what you concentrate upon. There is no other main rule. You make your own reality wherever you travel and in whichever dimension you find yourself. Now, according to Seth, the problems that exist in the world today, both on an individual and mass basis, are the reflection of erroneous and limiting beliefs that are more or less rampant throughout the globe. Here are some short quotes about this from Seth's book entitled The Individual and the Nature of Mass Events. Quote, your scientific beliefs tell you that your entire world happened accidentally. Your religions tell you that man is sinful. En masse, your private beliefs form your cultural reality. As long as you believe that either good events or bad ones are meted out by a personified God as the reward or punishment for your actions, or on the other hand, that events are largely meaningless, chaotic, subjective knots in the tangled web of an accidental Darwinian world, then you cannot consciously understand your own creativity or play the role in the universe that you are capable of playing as individuals or as a species. Now, here's an audio selection of Seth speaking along these lines. Your godliness speaks through your creature. It is not the best. And no entities took upon themselves uh, the disreputable descent into that. <laughs> your souls are not slumming. <laughs> You are not at the garbage heap of the universe. <laughs> you are yourselves becoming. And you are creating in your way a unique reality in a which in your term each moment is a miraculous and in your term forever new in which your own identities are forever original and unduplicated and composed of atoms and molecules that are themselves unique, original, and unduplicated. And your atoms and molecules are not slamming. You are not cosmic. 
cosmic princesses and the prince who come down here to immerse yourselves in lives of sorrow and degradation who wear physical bodies of great weight gross and a sinful <laughs> <laughs> you are spirits who express yourselves to the miraculous joy of flesh who create the creation unknown in your terms of a war that is in its way eternal who bring uh, to the universe a reality unknown in your terms before and yet eternal who wear as your badge of identity a joy and exaltation uh, through which the flesh sings and those who tell uh, you that physical life is evil do not know of what they are speaking. And those who tell you that you have original sin do not know what original creation is. As I have told you before, those who speak to you in terms of guilt, in whatever terms, ignore them. Those who tell you that to be spiritual is not to be physical. Do not understand the great spiritual biological nature of your being. They have not listened to the song that your physical organs sing. They have not dreamed in their minds using the physical neurons they have not sparkled within themselves like stars and they're so experiencing night. They think that existence is dark. Open up those eyes that you have. Perceive the reality that you know, and it alone leads you into other realities that are also your own. Gods indeed couched in creaturehood, and for a reason. You have legs, or use them. You have consciousness, use it. You have minds, or use them. And use your joy and smile. <coughs> you know what I am about to do now. But for you, listen to the vitality of your own being. Be alert to your own vitality and let it ring to the reality of your thoughts and sensations and it will lead you where you want to go and where you are. But forget your profundity and do not fear shadows 
and forget what you have been told of good and evil, and uh, be your alive, a vital self in which the good of yourself dwells. According to Seth, spiritual growth involves reconnecting with the source of your being. It involves the use and development of greater capacities of your consciousness. It involves the use and development of what Seth refers to as inner senses, which include direct knowing, direct comprehension of knowledge that cannot be fully described with words. It involves expanding your psychic structure and becoming a conscious participator with your soul. The ego that we usually identify with as ourselves is really just a part of ourselves, a living portion of our soul or inner self. In our terms, the inner self can be thought of as primarily residing in what Seth refers to as inner reality. Inner reality can be thought of as a vast, infinite complex of inner dimensions from which we came, which we visit every night in our dreams, and to which we will be returning upon our physical deaths. Although we have never really left, for inner reality forms the outer world, and the outer world exists within inner reality. The inner self is not unconscious but is instead far more conscious than the physical personality. The inner self constantly sends information to the physical personality through intuitions, impulses, and dreams. But because of the limiting beliefs of our culture, the physical personality has been trained to block the continually emerging wisdom from our own souls. Here's a quote on this from Seth's book entitled The Magical Approach. Quote, you are taught to submerge the very intuitive abilities that the intellect needs to do its proper work. It is not that you overuse the intellect as a culture, but that you rely upon it to the exclusion of all other faculties in your approach to life. When it is overly stressed with all of the usual frameworks or rationales that go along with it, it can indeed become frightened, paranoid, unquote. The usual frameworks or rationales that Seth is talking about here are the widely accepted limiting belief frameworks that cast humankind in a negative and powerless light and lead people to mistrust themselves and their universe. Seth often refers to this framework of beliefs as the official line of consciousness. Let's listen to Seth now speaking about this topic. And each of you, to some degree or another, here believe that the universe is not safe, and therefore you must set up your defenses against it. Now the one line official consciousness with which you are familiar says, the world is not safe. I cannot uh, trust it, nor can I trust the conditions of experience or the conditions uh, of my own existence, nor can I trust myself. I can uh, look at a squirrel and uh, rejoice, but I cannot uh, look at myself and uh, rejoice, for lo, I am filled uh, with iniquity. And I am, uh, to some extent, evil, uh, and I must hide uh, myself. I am not only evil uh, as uh, myself, but I come uh, from a tainted uh, and a flawed uh, race, and uh, my father and uh, my mother is tainted before me. Uh, and I send uh, these uh, tragic uh, flows on uh, before me into the future, and uh, therefore I must uh, need uh, protect myself, 
and I must set up my defenses uh, in whatever way I can uh, to protect myself in a universe that I cannot uh, trust and to protect myself from a self that is evil uh, and uh, flawed. And as long as you hold uh, to those uh, beliefs, then in whatever way you must uh, need set up defenses, you have an entire civilization and a world set up about those beliefs I have just given you. <laughs> that the universe is not safe, that you must defend yourselves uh, from enemies, uh, that come from without and uh, worse of all uh, from enemies mm -hmm. uh, that are within. And uh, so indeed uh, do you feel uneasy and uh, set up your barriers uh, and uh, run as fast as you can in whatever way given you from those enemies that are the result of uh, a one-line official kind of consciousness. As long as you believe uh, that you dwell uh, in a universe that is a threat, you must defend uh, yourself against it. As long as you believe uh, that the self is flawed uh, and that your race is damned and evil, you must also defend yourself against yourself. And how can you then trust the voice of the psyche? And when I say to you, be spontaneous, how dare you take that step? The official line of consciousness forms a world about it. And you perceive and experience that world. And it will always show you the results of the beliefs that are inherent in the official line of consciousness. While uh, you devote yourself to that official line of consciousness, the world will always appear the same, evil, disastrous, bound only for damnation, whether through nuclear destruction or the greater judgment of a fundamental God. The one-line stage of consciousness was necessary for reasons uh, that Rupert has clearly given in his uh, own uh, new book. But that stage contained within it its own impetus. It set up challenges uh, that could not be solved at that stage of consciousness and that would automatically lead uh, you uh, into other Strands of a when. Only then can those contradictions make sense. Only then can you say individually and listen now. I live in a safe universe. You need not say, the universe is safe, for at your present level that will only enrage. <laughs> <laughs> you say instead, I live in a safe universe and so you shall. And those defenses that you set up against uh, threats will crumble, for they will not be needed. When you start to trust yourself, 
you allow yourself to be your spontaneous self. You allow yourself to go with the flow of your being. You listen to the voice of your own psyche, and you allow your intellect to receive and trust the intuitions and impulses coming from the inner self. When you trust your being and let yourself go, you automatically start to tune into higher states of consciousness, which Seth sometimes refers to as the spacious mind or higher intellect. Here's a selection of Seth speaking on this topic taken from tape number 26 of the Seth Audio Collection. When now you let yourself go, you are yourself. You forget what you have been told that you should have been. You forget must and shall and should. And you are as a bird or a flower or a god is. You possess eternity in a moment. You recognize your own being. You are what you are in those moments. Many of you believe that the intellect has one primary purpose. And if there is one imaginary sign in your mind that would be painted by the intellect according to your beliefs, the sign would say, stop, look, listen. For you believe that the prime purpose of the intellect is to criticize. You do not believe that the intellect is to be creative or imaginative or explorative. It is a uh, your stopwatch. When you become uh, too creative, it says stop. Not because that is the purpose of the intellect, but because you believe that it is. Now, when you are your thing, you tune in what can be called the spacious mind or the higher intellect in which your intellectual faculties and your imaginative faculties work together. And there is no division between them. Then you are, and you know that you are. You do not have to question what you are doing. Your intellect then is like a beam of light leading your imagination and your emotion. And it does not say stop but the goal. According to Seth, to let go is to trust the spontaneity of your being, to trust your own energy and power and strength, and to abandon yourself to the energy of your life. Here's a Seth audio excerpt on spontaneity taken from tape number four of the Seth audio collection. Now I say love you. That in basic terms, civilization is dependent upon the spontaneity and the fulfillment of the individual. Your civilization is in sad straits. 
Not because uh, you have allowed uh, spontaneity or fulfillment uh, to individuals, but because uh, you have uh, denied it. And because your institutions are based upon uh, that uh, premise, you think that left alone, the natural inclinations of a man uh, would destroy civilization. Then uh, what indeed uh, started our civilization if not the natural inclinations of man? What began as uh, a cooperation that allowed people to unite even in drives, if not the natural inclination of man? If you learn to trust your being, then uh, you will uh, be able uh, to trust your institutions and your civilization. You equate that spontaneity with irresponsibility. Abandon uh, with evil. If you abandon uh, yourselves uh, to yourselves, then uh, what good uh, would uh, seem uh, to spring out of the heavens of your being? Your world is not in dire straits because you trust yourselves, but precisely because uh, you do not. Your social structures are set up to fence in uh, the individual rather than to allow uh, the natural development of the individual. I read my first Seth book, entitled The Seth Material, in 1970. I've been studying and teaching and working with the Seth material ever since. The Seth material is voluminous, with over 25 volumes of published Seth books, and this does not include books written by Jane Roberts that contain her own writing, as well as some Seth material. So this recording obviously cannot possibly do justice to all of the topics covered in the Seth material. It can only give you a small taste of what Seth's teachings are all about. Seth's books, for example, cover in depth topics like the after-death experience, dreams and out-of-body experiences, the religions of the world, reincarnation, health and healing, science, quantum physics from a spiritual perspective, the nature of time, exercises for consciously creating your reality, and how the principle that each person creates their own reality fits in with such things as birth conditions, mass disasters, epidemics, war, and politics. For those reading their first Seth book, I recommend starting with the book entitled Seth Speaks, The Eternal Validity of the Soul by Jane Roberts. Seth has recommended that the books be read in their order of publication as each one builds upon the previous one. And now, for our final Seth audio excerpt, I have selected the first Seth class that I ever attended. This selection is taken from tape number 24 of the Seth audio collection. Now, none of you are basically afraid of failure. You are not afraid of that quest for truth will have uh, no reward. You are afraid of much more mundane uh, things. You are afraid of playing the fool. You are afraid of letting go. You are afraid of not being dignified. You are afraid uh, of not being a uh, prissy. You are afraid of not being conventional. You are afraid that someone uh, will laugh. All of this means that you do not trust the inner self, your own uh, identity. 
that you have a little faith in yourself. And until you have faith in yourself, you can have no real faith in the universe or in all that is. Many of you do not know what you feel or what your opinions are, though you think that you do, for you accept the opinions of others. Until you free your sin, you cannot free others. You cannot be free in the reality that you are now making. A flower does not need to give itself a sermon. I'm a good of the sun. It does not have to convince itself that the universe is a good thing. It is itself joyfully in trust and the faith. Now I put it to you, to all of you, <clears throat> that in many ways the smallest cell in your left ear has more faith than you do in the nature of reality, for it is itself. Therefore, be yourselves and do not set up barriers against what you are. You are part of all that is. Once you recognize this fact, there are no barriers that you need set up against yourself. You cannot want to probe into the inner reality that is your own being on the one hand, and to be afraid of it as a dungeon of evil on the other. The blades of grass do not bow down their heads in repentance. And as one of the Sumeri songs states, the gods do not come kneeling. Then do not come kneeling, but with the realization that you are uniquely original uniquely a part of all that is. And do not cringe before others or before yourselves. And to show you <coughs> what an adult Buba is and what an adult I am and how holy and the spiritual and the dignified we can be. Then uh, once again uh, be joyful with me and uh, let the vitality that sings through this form uh, sing also through your own uh, for the same energy is available to you. And if the stars sing, they do not cry. And yourselves sing, listen to them. And forget much that you have been taught. Now I know that all of you can quite easily become conscious in the dream state and I expect you to do so. You are missing some 
fascinating encounters. If you could uh, appreciate your own uniqueness and indeed perfection at this moment in the same way that you can appreciate the affection and the perfection of an animal, then you would have some idea of what you are. Look at yourselves as you would look at a beloved friend. Be as gentle to yourselves as you would be to a beloved friend. Then you will not fear yourselves so deeply. And now I bid you a fond good evening. And may all the energy that is yours make itself known to you. And may you be as playful and blessed as the cell, the smallest cell within your ear, as playful and blessed as the gods are and as playful and blessed as the inner self that is your self. Now, before Rupert closes class, he does not like the word soul, but I do. Now, you may use the word entity if you prefer. But the soul is not something that you have. It is not something that you save or lose. It is not something like virginity <laughs> that is given up and then regretted. <laughs> It is not a cherished heirloom that you hide in the closet away from strangers. It is what you are. You do not suddenly get a soul like this. You have it now because you are it now. The soul does not begin to perceive at death. It and the you perceive now. You do not have to wait until death to find out what the soul is. Know yourself now and you know what your soul is. And with those weighty words, I close my and Rupert can close the class as he wishes. My peace to you, and that peace that I cannot give you, you will have to get for your sake. One of my personal goals is to preserve Seth's teachings and introduce his books to the many people who have never heard of him but may be ready to hear what he has to say. I know that these books can help people to accelerate their spiritual growth and learn how to access their own vast power and wisdom. To this end, I offer this recording as a gift, and I strongly encourage you to read Seth's first book, Seth Speaks, the Eternal Validity of the Soul, by Jane Roberts.